Hi folks, Jason here. In this video we're going to be looking at how to use transparent materials, in this case a uh, stained glass window, and then how we can also just create some uh, what we call god rays to come through the window and also we're going to put some particles in there to make it look atmospheric. So as you can see here, uh, this is a sort of scene I've created now. I uh, kindly had uh, this uh, photograph donated uh, from a first year student who's, uh, who was looking to basically create a platformer game and we were talking about how to make the, uh, make the glass transparent and I thought I'd take it a step further and we'd also have some rays coming through it. So the results are, are quite impressive. You know, this is using uh, Unreal Engine of course. Um, there's a few things you need to do. I'll try and keep it as short as I can, but essentially what you're going to have is essentially a bit of uh, static mesh. So you can see here, this is uh, basically like a wall area here, which is easy to create. And then we've got the actual image, which is on a plane. And then in order to mask off and create this very nice kind of um, uh, shadow, uh, we're going to need to basically um, create uh, another shape to mask the image so it's solid and uh, and then we put that in place in real and the results are pretty cool so without further ado let's get going so in the next video we're going to be looking at how we start setting this up using uh, Maya and also going on to 3D Coat and Implant Unreal. So, thanks for watching, folks, and I shall see you in the next video. Okay, that's it. Bye for now. Hi, folks, and welcome back. So, in this video, I'm just going to be really just taking a, a glance over um, some of the things that I did to achieve the end results in the engine. So I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail regarding Maya or indeed 3D code, but I just want to kind of just touch on a few things um, that I did in order to kind of get there. So for those of you who are familiar with the Maya, uh, you'll see this is a very kind of basic model. Now, I didn't bother doing any UV mapping. It was just to basically create the structure. And then I essentially um, exported this out to 3D code as an OBJ. With the plane here, uh, as you can see, I basically put the uh, image onto a plane. You can see, if I just go and fetch over my, uh, the editor now, you can see that I've got that in there. That sort of sat on there, and I'll basically export this plane as well. Obviously, just the OBJ into Unreal as well. Moving over to 3D Coat. So essentially, what I did was I moved it over. I just click on this here. So basically what I did was I imported it and uh, just sculpted into it using some of these tools here. Just gave it, made it look a little bit more rugged, you know, shaved the kind of edges of it, things like that. And then basically what I did was I uh, right clicked on it and went to retopology uh, or retopo uh, via decimation. And then essentially uh, it does something like that. Go to bake and then bake it out. And then going through to the paint shop there, you can see there, I've just basically got, got the retopologized version and uh, I've got a little um, a smart material just with some rock on there and did a bit of painting. Again, if you're familiar with 3D code, you'll have to do that. Again, you can do this in Substance Painter as well. Okay, so uh, other things I just wanted to kind of show you as well. So if you just go back to, um, back to Maya, you'll see there that obviously we're going to make this translucent but at the same time, what we're going to need is we're going to need like a solid base here for this shape. So this is going to sort of mask out the beams of light that are going to be coming through there. So what I did in uh, 3D Coat, just go back to here. Now I think it's in, there we go. So what essentially what I did was I used a uh, this thing called the Cutout tool, which is here, the Cutoff tool. And essentially what I've got here is uh, I imported a black and white image essentially of that image that you can see there in the photograph uh, but made it black and white in Photoshop and then essentially used that, uh, made a stencil of it, put the stencil um, and over the top of it essentially and um, 
and then basically um, 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 uh, just blast it over the top. You can see there. We well, can see a little bit anyway. But basically, put the overlay it over the top of um, over the top of an object, and then you use the cutoff to kind of do that. And so I'm not going to do that. Uh, not going to do that. So other than that, uh, that is pretty much it. With the rest of um, so with the rest of the um, um, uh, the project. So basically, what I did was I retopologized that. Obviously, I retopologized that. I exported those out. Uh, going to export objects and textures. Put that into a folder. Make making sure that on here I've got it as on standard. You could put it uh, for Unreal Engine, but all I needed was the diffuse, the specular, the roughness, and the normal. So you put all those, export both of these into a folder. And that is essentially it. You've already uh, got the image for stained glass, which is there. Uh, you don't need to put this plane into uh, into 3D code, so just basically export it as an OBJ. And then in the next video, we're going to come back to Unreal Engine, and we are going to look at how I apply translucence translucency over onto that image and then overlaid the uh, this 3D object on that as well and did all the god rays. So so that's it. So thanks for watching and in the next video I'm going to show you how I achieved the effects. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Folks, in this video, we're just going to be going over importing our assets into the and also we're going to be um, applying materials, and also we're going to look at these effects with the God Rays um, uh, in Unreal. So, without further ado, let's get going. So, um, assuming that uh, most of you are familiar with um, uh, Unreal Engine, you are looking at this video. You can see here what I've done is I've opened up. Um, Unreal in third person, so we can actually have our character uh, run up there. You'll see there below, this is where we're going to be importing our stuff in the content browser. So let's start by doing that. So first of all, because I've done this before, so I'm going to go to import, I'm going to go through to the desktop, we're going to find the folder. So this is for the uh, model of the, the frame that uh, I created. So I'm going to just select all of those, go open. Now it's going to come up with a series of prompts. I'll go import all and it'll say, are you sure? And it'll say yes or yes all. So just give this a second. I'm going to drag now the, uh, the actual frame into the scene here. And I'm just going to enlarge it. <laughs> Okay, so I've got that set up there. Also, what I'm going to do is, whilst I'm thinking about it, is I'm just going to take away this wall because essentially what we're going to have is we're going to have the sun coming through here. So I just need a wall just to kind of to create the effect. So I'll get that out of the way. And with the church material, so I'm just going to double click on that. And you'll see here that although it's got the um, diffuse material on there, it hasn't got anything else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bring this up a little bit to there and it's going to drag in the rest of them so we've got the normal I'm going to connect that all with the normal and then once that's saved out I'm just going to close that down so we can have, just have a quick look and just see what it looks like it's going to go to play I'm going to hit um, F11 so it's full to screen and let's just go and have a look and just see if that's all looking okay so yeah, so that's got like uh, it's got the necessary stuff on there. Everything looks okay on there. All right, that's all good. Right, so we're ready to go to the next stage. Click off F11. Uh, I'm going to create another folder for this. So this is going to be the actual frame that we're putting in there. So I'm going to call this frame, and I'm just going to double click on that. So it's just so we don't get mixed up with our. Um, OBJs and you know, the rest of it. So I'll go back to desktop and then go to frame, open that. So it's the same deal again. So the frame is going to enable us to basically just mask off the um, the um, the light so we kind of get that nice kind of shape coming through. Okay. 
if you want to, you can put a little bit of an extension on there just so you don't have any gaps, but it shouldn't be necessary or something like that. Okay, so now we've got uh, the frame sorted, we just need to uh, import our window. So we go through to import now. And first of all, we're going to import the JPEG and we'll bring that in. And also we need the uh, plane to bring in as well. So I'm going to go to import. I'm going to go and find our plane. We should have a yes in there. we go, window. We go open, go import all. Click off that. There we go. So there's our window. And we're going to go and drag that in there. And I'm just going to merge that. So once you've got that in place, we're ready now to deal with the material. So we need to be able to make this translucent. So what I'm going to do is, although it's created a material already, I'm just going to go and create a fresh one now. So go to material. I'm going to call this uh, win underscore mat. And I'm going to double click on that. And what I'm going to do here is uh, I've imported the, the uh, JPEG. Now I'm going to drag that into here. I'm going to connect it up to the base color. Now, in order to kind of get this as uh, translucent, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the left button and S to create a parameter. I'm going to call this window. Let's try that again. Window. Okay, and uh, and. What we're going to do next is we need to be able to connect this up, but at the moment opacity isn't there. And the reason for that is if I just click on the material now, we've got some things on the side here. It says a material domain and then it says blend mode. And where it says opaque, you need to click on that, go to where it says translucent. Now you'll see opacity appears. I click on that. Move that to run right there. And then with the uh, parameter selected, we want to make the default value something like 0.88. to hit apply. With any look, we should see our image. There we go. Pretty cool. Now that's, uh, and also it is looking fairly tran transparent. You can play around with this, increase it, decrease it, depending on what level of transparency you want. I put that at about 0.88. Also, just so we can see it from the other side, I'm just going to just click on the material there, scroll down, you see where it says two-sided? I'm just gonna click on that. Just so we can see it from the other side up. So apply that. And then we'll save. There we are. There we go. So we can see like around around the entire thing. I'm going to close this down. So that's our new material. Now we've got the old material on there, so we need to change that. So what I'm going to do here, and this is where you've got to be careful. So now we've got our frame here. I'm just going to go and select the glass to make sure that the glass is selected, not the frame, but the glass. Okay. Now, if you're not sure, you can also look on um, look on your world outline there, and you will see that there. You've got the frame selected, or got the window selected. So just make sure that that's all tickety boo. And then all you need to do is just click and hold the new material, and we're going to drag it onto our scene there so I can see it's looks like it's actually gone onto the frame I'm just going to undo that and what I'll do is I'll just drag this out just so let's try that let's try and move that forward our material there so we're just going to drag that back on there there we go that's why we're going to drag that back to there and then we can go and select our window 
ones. That's better. So we've got that sandwich there. And we can have another go at trying to drag our material onto that now. So with window selected, drag it on there. There we go. So now that is transparent. And also it looks like it's transparent on the other. There we go. So we're getting both sides coming through there. And let's just go and uh, let's go and have a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so yeah, that's all good. And then if we go around on the other side, you should be able to sort of see. Yeah, there we go. So we're ready for the final stage, and the final stage being that we want some light to come through here. So in order to kind of get the full effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just zoom out a little bit, and I'll probably just create some walls. So I'll just get something like a cube or drag that on there. And what I'll do is just kind of mask this off, just so we kind of get... Because we're going to create quite a bit of light. And we don't want... Um, we just want to be able to kind of get that very nice kind of uh, bloom effect going on there. So I'm just doing this very kind of rough and ready. Let's put that there. So we're ready now to come in with the light. So how we do this is we need to basically create these rays uh, going with the uh, light source. So we've got the light source there. So wherever the uh, the sun may be, you can see it's at the top there. We need to basically um, uh, rotate it down so we get like long shadows. So it's a bit like the sun setting, right? So with that selected, First of all, what we're going to do is just going to rotate it down, and you should start to see a difference there, like so. Yeah. But once you've got that selected, with that selected, we need to basically start having a play around with. The scroll down here, uh, with the light shafts. So if I just bring that to there, and this is where we'll start actually seeing the effects. So first of all. Probably like it'd be good just to play around with the intensity, yeah. So we can see that there. So let's just get that sorted first. So something like that. You see, there's probably some like little gaps there coming through the window, but don't worry about that. So we can see the light coming through, and of course you can play around with the light color as well. If you wanted to kind of change the uh, the color of it, you can do to whatever color you want. Keep that fairly neutral. And then we come down to the light shaft. So you need to turn on basically light shaft occlusion and also the light shaft bloom. So this is where we can already see we start to get an effect there. And now you can see, can you see that? If I just go on to the uh, press F11, there we go. You can already now see that starting to work. Yeah, the angle's a little bit off. So basically what we need to do is with that selected, with the blooms there, you probably just need to go back up to the light source, and this is where we can start playing around, right? So have it kind of dipping down maybe, and maybe even coming over to the side a little bit, so we can have a look at that. And again, it's a bit of a tricky one to uh, to see, but you can you can determine it by, you see that there with the, uh, with the uh, reflection coming down on there, and start to get an idea of the bloom as it stands, but uh, but again, it just takes a bit of kind of playing around with really, and just sort of seeing, you know, having a um, having a um, uh, just to play around with the um, with the light shafts and you know playing around with the um, where are we with the scale of it as well. You can increase that there, you know, with the bloom scale the threshold as well so you don't want it too strong something like um, something like this we've got the balloon brightness uh, turned up to pretty much to 100 percent let's just go and have a quick look at that now and just see what it looks like with the character there. let's go play and let's go with f11 and we'll go and take a run up and then you can see there already we do have a bit of a bloom 
We can certainly make it look a little bit stronger, but that's that's not looking too bad. But we can certainly increase that a little bit uh, in terms of uh, looking at... Let's go back to... Um, sorry, I need to go back and select the light source. And... Have a look at the... there uh, where are we there we go blue scale so we can maybe increase it a little bit and of course you can also uh, play around with the intensity of the light as well you can blast it up a little bit if you want to the last part of it as well which I just wanted to come show you is the um, uh, just the particle effects this is really easy it's not really a thing you got this thing called particles you go over to where it says ambient dust and go and drag that over into the scene, like so. You can see there they already appear, and you can play around with the scale of those. There are some parameters as well where you can kind of have a mess around. You can, you know, even go into the actual thing itself. If you double click on it, you can play around with like the colors and things like that. But I'm not going to get into that uh, for now. Well, all in all, that is pretty much it. I can see there that uh, the the part of the geometry has changed so I'm just going to change that there we go and uh, let's just go and have one final look now so I'm just going to widen that up a little bit go to play hit F11 and you can see that already that's fairly strong you can see it kind of uh, the light coming out now if we're lucky we might even see some of the particles there we go you can see them there this is quite nice for atmospheric. So you can actually change the size of them as well. You can them. Well, that's pretty much it. And then, of course, you know, you've got your stained glass window and it's there in all of its glory. But that's pretty much it, folks. Hopefully you found this uh, video useful. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And uh, until next time, folks, uh, thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next video. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye for now. Thank you.